Hi, everyone. This is Elsie Kearns, your moderator for this exciting webinar upcoming with Pam Young Huns. And I have had to wear my angel earrings since <laughs> the hybrid solar eclipse. And Pam was just talking about these geomagnetic storms and Mercury is retrograde and we are in such upheaval. So Pam, can you tell us what's going on and what is so special about this hybrid solar eclipse and more that are to come later this month and into May? Great. Yes, it does feel like there is a lot going on. And, and some of it, you know, I was we were talking before we got started here. There was a really big geomagnetic storm yesterday. They, um, the scale goes up to like a, a G5. And G5 is an extreme storm. And we got up to G4, which is a severe storm. So we, and it lasted for quite a while. We had about 24 hours of some variation of storming in the Earth's magnetic field. And that affects a lot of things. It affects us physically, emotionally, mentally. And it's just a lot of a lot of static on the line, you might say. So that was yesterday. But the hybrid, the hybrid eclipse. So these types of eclipses happen about once a decade. Um, the next one won't be until I think it's November 2031. So eight and a half years from now. But it's it's unique because along the path of the eclipse, depending where you are, you will either see it as an annular eclipse. That's one of those ring of fire eclipses. You see the ring of the sun. It looks like a, a ring of fire. Or a total eclipse where the sun is completely blanked out by the moon. Or a partial solar eclipse, which is where you see it's like a bite taken out of the apple. So it's unique in that way. Um, and my sense of it is that it's a really good symbolic gesture <laughs> from the universe to remind us that just because we see things differently than someone else doesn't make someone else wrong and us right or vice versa. It's like the that old um, fable, is it a fable of the, the three blind men who went to see what an elephant was and one of them touched the trunk one of them touched the elephant's broad side the other one touched the tail and they all came away with a different version of what an elephant was and they were all right none of them were wrong and yet they could have had great discussions about who was right and wrong but i think this hybrid solar eclipse is our reminder and it's it's a really the perfect timing because we're in such, such polarities right now, you know, between political parties and just ideologies on all levels. And it's a good reminder if we take it in that way of, there are no wrong perspectives. They're just coming from different directions. So does that explain it a little bit? Yes, it does. And it makes it a little bit clearer, but, when we have the full moon this month, we have another eclipse, correct? Yes. So the eclipse, the, the full moon on May 5th is an eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse. And that's going to be a big one, too. Um, lunar eclipses are always emotional times. This one specifically, I'll get into in the class more. Um, the class is on May 4th. The webinar is on May 4th. So it's the the night before the eclipse happens. So I'll talk about it more then. Eclipses happen every six months or so. They happen in pairs. Sometimes there are three of them at a time, but it's most common that they come in pairs, a, a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. And they're, they're times of pretty big shifts in the energies. A solar eclipse is a new moon, but it's like a mega new moon and a lunar eclipse is a full moon, but it's like a mega full moon. So we think of a new moon as being an opportunity for a new beginning, an ending of an old cycle, beginning of a new cycle month to month. With a solar eclipse, it's the ending of a six month cycle and the beginning of a new six month cycle. So there's, there's a bigger frame of reference that it brings 
us. And there's also even some you might call karmic levels involved with a with a both eclipses. Um, eclipses happen when the a full moon or a new moon is relatively close to these points in the in astrology called the north and south node. They are designators of our karmic past and our evolutionary future. And so every time we have an eclipse, it's involving those themes. What are we leaving behind, not just from the last six months even, but on, a, on an evolutionary level, what traits do we need to leave behind? What karmic residue is needing to be processed so that we can open up and embrace a, a new way of being? which is the next step on our evolutionary path. So eclipses are always, always a major time. And we're right now, we're right now between the two eclipses. And that always feels very surreal to me. It's like, we're not quite touching the ground. Um, it's got a little bit of a dreamlike state. And I think this year right now, it's especially so it, it feels even more so because Mercury Planet Mercury, which represents how we think, how we communicate, you know, how our brains work. Mercury just went retrograde last Friday. So in addition to being in this kind of neverland between eclipses, we've got Mercury retrograde, which I like to think of as an opportunity to look at life very symbolically, almost as if we are dreaming it rather than literally living it and, and figuring things out that way, the meanings of, of events. So we've got both of those overlaid. And I think, I think Elsie, from what you were describing, you're feeling it, you know, the, the, the angel earrings. Um, I've been calling angels in around to me um, pretty strongly over the last few days too. It just feels like we're needing that calming. We're needing that feeling of support. But yes, eclipse season is, is an important time. Well, it not only is an important time, but as you said, we're right between these two. And so I can understand from what you've just explained why you named this webinar that you're going to do May 4th as a quickening, that that quantum shift is really moving and gaining momentum. Yes, and it's not only because of the eclipses, but eclipses certainly accelerate things. But there's a specific um, planetary relationship that's happening in May. Um, it involves Jupiter and Pluto. Pluto is a great catalyst of change. He's the transformation master, um, god of the underworld. So he takes us through a process of death and rebirth. So that's big in and of itself. But when we get Jupiter involved, Jupiter is the biggest planet in our known solar system. Whatever Jupiter touches, he makes bigger, faster, <laughs> greater in some way. So when we get Jupiter and Pluto interacting in May, this is going to speed things up even more, this transformational process, which actually relates back to 2020. That's the last time Jupiter and Pluto came together in a really strong way. So this is like the next step in a, in a process of big change that was initiated back in 2020. And it's going to be very strong in May. And then there are going to be other, other factors that come in later in May, but also in July. July is going to be very powerful. And I'll talk more about that. It involves Pluto and then that north and south node that I was talking about earlier that has that karmic evolutionary path um, energy about it. So that's, there's more than one reason that I called it the quickening, but the eclipses, the Jupiter, Pluto energy, and then this Pluto, Pluto connection with what's called the nodal axis, the, the north and south node. So yeah, so it is, It we are stepping into that feeling of things speeding up, that energy of change, the quantum shift, moving us into a new reality in many, many ways. So Pam, I know some people are asking that question about astrology, like, do they need to know astrology to benefit from this webinar? Mm -hmm. 
That's a great question. And if you go to my website, you'll see that my little tagline beneath North Point Astrology, it says, bringing the stars down to earth. And that's what I really try to do. I try to not oversimplify, but make things, state things, share things in a very concrete way. So bringing the stars down to earth, explaining what the planets mean, explaining what these interactions mean. Um, I like to give examples of, of how things, um, just as an example, so that north and south node that I represent, that I talked about earlier, south node being kind of our karmic past, north node being our evolutionary future. My example of, of a way to think about that is that the south node south node is the horse we ride in on. The north node is the horse we're supposed to get on. So I try to use analogies like that, examples like that to help us also understand. So no, you do not need to know astrology in order to come to the class. I don't use, I do have the, the charts in the slideshow, which, you know, the horoscope wheel, which has symbols in it, but all of my text is written out in English and I do my best to explain things in, in terms that everyone can understand. Okay, so one other question I have here is, what if I can't attend your event? It's going to be on Zoom online May 4th. Right. So the great thing about Zoom, of course, is that we can record. So it's great to have people show up. I really love the gallery and seeing people's faces and names and all of that's wonderful. But if you can't attend live, and there, there's a lot of people who actually attend this or sign up for it who live in other countries as well, and there's, you know, I don't expect people to get up at midnight to come watch a class. So everyone who registers for the class, Elsie's great within, you know, usually within a few hours. And then again, the next morning, she sends out a link to the replay, um, which is both the video and, and an audio, I believe. And then everybody who signs up gets calendars. I create a calendar for every month we'll be looking at. So May, June, July, and August. Day by day, it has a list of the important astrological events that are going on. And everybody who signs up for the class gets those calendars ahead of time so that you can use them for taking notes. So if you can't attend, you'll still have the calendars if you can't attend live, you'll still have the calendars. And when you watch it later, you'll be able to do your note taking on that. Um, I think that, does that answer the question? Yes, I, I definitely. And I keep my calendar handy so that I call them those little yes. icons that you have. I call them, those are the squirrely days. <laughs> so I wanna remind everybody that already registered that we're go we sent out the calendars once. I'm sending them out tomorrow, and they will go out again a couple of times as people continue to register. So you'll get Pam's calendars in advance. You'll also get them with the replay, the audio, the video. Uh, you'll have Pam's PowerPoint slideshow to even go back and reference. And this will be up for quite a long time, so you don't have to worry about will it go down or will I not be able, you'll be able to access it. And we encourage you to download it so you have it on your computer or your tablet as well. Thursday, May the 4th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And when you look at this link here to register, it will give you all the times across the U.S. and Europe so we would love to have you join us. The fee is $27 and it's easy to sign up and join us for this event and share in the excitement of what's going on right now and for the next four months. Okay, um, someone just asked, Linda asked, is there a transcript available? Absolutely, I think that's also available through Zoom. Yep, Linda. So, Pam, we will see each other on Zoom Thursday night, May the 4th. It'll be 4 p.m. your time and 7 p.m. here. And I'm looking forward to it. 
If anyone has any questions, please feel free to contact me. All of my information will be up there and I'll be happy to walk you through whatever you need. Okay? Thank you, Elsie. All right. So take care, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. And also sign up for Pam's free Sunday journal so you also keep in touch with what's going on for the coming week. Okay, everybody, have a good night, and we'll see you next week. Good night, Elsie. Good night.